Stevie, great to have you here. Now tell me this, are you coaching a side at the moment or just coaching your kids? Well, I'm coaching at the Swans, an assistant coach, but I'm also um, the under-8s coach at the uh, Dremoyne Power. So what, what do you say to the crew there? Uh, well, my biggest problem is um, I have to tell the kids to stop kicking around corners. <laughs> and why do you think they keep kicking around the corners? Yeah, well, I've got no idea, but my, uh, my little fella, I take him down to the park for a kick. Stop kicking across your body, Archie. You've got to focus on kicking drop punts. So it goes all against what I probably saw. You brought it into the game. <laughs> into the game. Yeah, well, now I'm trying to take it out. <laughs> Stevie Swan's favourites yesterday against the Blues, but you've just got to get the job done, and they did, not without a loss. Yeah, the game was the game was uh, in the balance for most of the day, and Carlton fans have got a lot to look forward to in, in the future. But um, yeah, we got over the line. Uh, a couple of guys have, have gone down with injury, which um, uh, will hurt us going forward. But um, as I said earlier, it's it's good to get four points on the board. This is Jared McVeigh now. This is the quad. Have a look at immediate. Yeah, it doesn't look great, does it? So, um, and when you're getting on in your career, uh, you're more prone to these type of injuries. So, um, like yeah, seventh just hope for the season, seventeenth season. For and he Jared. was having a really great game. I think even uh, you know the, the Carlton, Carlton coaching staff uh, started running with him, which is a credit to yeah. um, how he's gone about his footy in the first few weeks of the season. <laughs> right, Stevie, you were watching from the coach's box yesterday. What did you see? Yeah, well, it's. Um, it was, a, it was a great start for the fans um, early in the game. There was a lot of goals kicked in the first quarter. Uh, 11 goals kicked from 15 shots at goal. Um, the Swans were able to get away, um, you know, probably for two and a half quarters. Uh, but it was uh, the game was really in the balance when Carlton kicked the last two goals of the third quarter and brought it back to a really close margin. Uh, a lot of scrappy goals, um, crumbing goals, Isaac Heaney... Um, he was he was fantastic. He kicked uh, four goals, and and for Carlton, Ed Kerno uh, hit the scoreboard. Uh, a couple of brilliant goals from him. He kicked four goals as well. So, um, as I said, the game was really in the balance for the majority of the day. Um, it wasn't until uh, Tom Papley was able to uh, get one off the ground here late in the final quarter that uh, that probably really broke the deadlock, and the game was over from that point. But. Um, yeah, the three things that I learnt uh, were that, the number one, the Blues fans need to keep turning up. They've got um, a bright future, so, so many great young players coming through and um, certainly good times are, are coming in the not-too-distant future. The second thing, the Battle of the Bulls was uh, good to watch. Uh, Joey Kennedy going up against Patrick Cripps, two of the best contested players in the competition. Um, that was a great match-up. And the third thing uh, I learnt was... Uh, Isaac Heaney showed what he's capable of. Um, as I mentioned, um, he was able to hit the scoreboard, uh, had 26 possessions, uh, kicked four goals coming off the wing. Um, you know, he slotted to a banana there. He kicked uh, a nice snap from the other side uh, and another nice snap from a crumb here. So um, he was a little bit sore last week and um, uh, it was good that uh, he hit back uh, with a game like this to get us over the line and get our first f four points for the year. Okay, it's someone who's had his critics over his career is Liam Jones, but yesterday on Buddy Franklin, he restricted him to just the four marks and two goals. One, I think it was a pretty good game from Liam Jones there. Yeah, I thought he was brilliant, um, Jonesy. Um, it was a very physical matchup. Um, I had sort of front row seats to it most of the day, but um, Jonesy's such a competitor, and um, Buddy's obviously the superstar of, of the competition. But um, yeah, I thought Jonesy was brilliant. Did you think that he could become a great defender? Um, it probably wasn't until he sort of got played his role down back in the VFL, and he was absolutely dominating down there. And it was I never had I wasn't sure he was capable of that, but he was literally it was like a man playing amongst boys in the VFL. It's a revelation. Yeah, um, and he, he's worked so hard at his craft as well. So it's great to see him getting some reward. Yeah. Hey, Kate, I, I noticed uh, the forward set up from both sides uh, yesterday, and I noticed with the, with the Swans they had three talls and they had Reed, Blakey and Buddy. I noticed with you guys, I know um, uh, Charlie Kerno was missing, but you only had two, two bigs uh, up forward in, 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 in uh, McGovern and McKay, and that allowed four smalls. Um, the plan, how do you think it went? Because I noticed with the Swans, Alea Alea had a small opponent. I think it might have been Ploughman at, at stages, and he was used as another uh, stopper to stop... Um, the, the other tools to stop McGovern and, and, and McKay. Yeah, well, uh, Mitch Mitch went off with a, um, a tight hammy sort of 
around half time, I think, which sort of probably hurt us as well, which allowed a leer and um, I think the Swans sent Reed back at stages throughout the game as well. So um, that's where we've just got to be better at our ball movement, not just bomb it away to, to Harry when he's got two blokes on him. So I think it's, um, it's a good learning curve for us as a young group to yeah. sort of change up our ball movement in play and not have to wait to a quarter time or half time to get a message about what the Swans are doing. Stevie, one of the things I noticed about the Swans yesterday was it looks like your tackling pressure's back up to scratch. I think 70 tackles. Was that really a focus going into this game? Yeah, it's been a big focus. The first two weeks, uh, our pressure you know, around the stoppages and around you know, getting onto those loose balls was really down and um, there's been a strong emphasis on, um, on applying that pressure. We know that um, the way the game's going, a lot of the scoring actually comes off the back of turnover, so it's really important that you, uh, you get that part of your game right. Uh, how is Will Hayward? Because there was an incident, and Kate, I'll get to that in a second because it involves you, but both players going for the ball, and unfortunately for Will Hayward, he's broken his jaw. How is he? Yeah, both players, they're obviously committed to the footy, but um, Will's come off second best, um, obviously copying a bit of a, a shoulder, but, um, yeah, it was actually quite funny at half time. I walked in and... Um, he was uh, on the green whistle, and you can say some funny things when you've got that green <laughs> whistle on you now. Um, what, what did he say, Stevie? He actually didn't seem too fussed about having a broken jaw. He said, I'm feeling good. <laughs> Cade, from your perspective, being involved in an incident like that, it's, it probably will come under scrutiny from the match review. From where I'm sitting, it looks like both players are contesting for the ball, so I don't think you're in any trouble, but at the time, you know, causing injury like that, it's, it's obviously not a nice feeling, is it? Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, um, but it is just part of the game. There's such a, so many collisions and stuff. Um, but, yeah, as you said, two players committed to the ball. Unfortunately, Will, um, yeah, got on the raw end of it. But um, You broke yeah. your draw 2012 when Sherrod and you collided. You were three weeks you missed? Yeah. What do you just have, weeks. soup and yoghurt for a week? Yeah, or quite a bit of soup. Um, yeah, pasta, stuff you can just slurp down, really. It's, yeah, right. it's, it's not enjoyable. So, um, yeah, I apologise to Will, um, but hopefully it's a speedy recovery. I touched on uh, the promising young players that you guys have got at the Blues um, and the number one pick from last year, Sam Walsh. Did you think he'd have the, the type of impact that he's having um, straight away in this competition? Because he's just um, looks like he's been around for 10 years. Yeah, uh, probably not when we first drafted him, but after watching him a couple of weeks on the training track and, and the way he went about his, his training and his, his gym work and stuff like that, um, I actually thought he would have quite a big impact. And... Um, he, as you said, it does look like he's been around for 10 years. Yeah. So these were your numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so on this basis, he might end up playing 910 games. Or something else. You've got the 310 and didn't do anything early. Yeah, he's got a bright future, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking about bright futures, Paddy Cripps arrived and he had an unbelievable impact early and right now he's just extraordinary. People talking about how he's carrying the Blues midfield. Yesterday, he carried Tom Papley. He has the ball under here and gets rid of it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's definitely a contested possession, isn't it? That's unbelievable, isn't it? He has the ball. You think, oh, it's, couldn't have it, could he? Yep. Could he handball? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's legal. Piggyback. Tom Papley does weigh about 25 kilos. Is that not too high? No, he ducked. He ducked his head. <laughs> he ducked his head. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, you're hanging around. Kathleen's injury news uh, in just a moment. She's in the realestate.com.au red room. Can you slide off in the Morning, Kathleen. The Bees. We need to find a win somewhere for you guys. They'll find one. They'll Thursday find night one. against the Swans. Maybe. Could be it. I think so. Where are we starting? Uh, we'll start with yesterday. Jared yep. McVeigh um, looked nasty, didn't it? Uh, oh. He went. It was almost like he got shot after he kicked up footy. Um, you see him just grab the upper part of his quad, falls to the ground. Now look, that area of the quad muscle is that's around your muscular tendinous junction, and they tend to be slightly nastier. Those injuries. Um, so my gut feel is that it's not looking good for him. For, for how long? Oh, look, worst case scenario, you know, they can be, if they're really bad, they can be the 10 weekers, you know, even 12 weekers, whether you go surgery or conservative. I hope, fingers crossed for him, it's nowhere near as bad as what it looked and he gets back quicker than that, but time will tell over the next few days. And 